on the trail, the most exciting television coverage of the Midwest's richest bass tournaments. For fast boats and fish catching action, it's Heartland on the trail. This week, awesome fish catching action from Table Rock Lake. Heartland's elite anglers are battling it out for a chance to be crowned the best in the Midwest. Don't go away. Tournament Association's Elite Tour offers one of the most unique bass tournament formats around. Instead of being paired with an amateur partner, competing fishermen are allowed to fish by themselves. This format allows anglers more freedom to fish where and how they want, and is quickly becoming the most popular circuit in mid-America. Heartland's Elite Tour is at Table Rock Lake in southwest Missouri. It's mid-June and many bass are pulling farther into deep water for the summer. Many anglers chase after these deep bass, but not all of them. Some fishermen stay shallow and hunt bass buried in flooded bushes or laying under docks. One of those fishermen is Bobby Albert of Willard, Missouri. Today we'll be following Albert as he tries to put together a five fish limit of shallow bass during a time when most anglers are fishing deep. We'll also be covering Danny Burns of Ozark, Missouri and Matt Ells of Marshfield, Missouri. Word has it these two anglers will be spending most of their time fishing deep. Can Bobby Albert's shallow water bite compete with the deeper fish of Burns and Ells? You'll have to wait and see. Table Rock's lake level is 917, two feet above pool. Water temperature is between 78 and 84 degrees, with the warmest water found in tributary arms. Water clarity ranges from 3 to 4 feet in the rivers, to 10 feet and more in the main lake. The forecast calls for partly sunny skies becoming overcast with a chance of showers by the afternoon. Highs are expected to reach near 80 degrees. We find Bobby Albert near Highway 13. He's pitching a 5 16 ounce homemade brown and blue finesse jig on 15 pound fluorocarbon to flooded bushes. No if he keep or not. didn't get skunked. Matt Ells is near the mouth of the James River near Ants Creek. He's casting a three-quarter ounce football jig to a flat main lake point with standing timber. Today I'm going to attempt to sit here. I was hoping I'd get here and catch at least three or four real early doing this. I've got one other spot right here close. I was going to drag this football jig on and I've got a couple flipping spots up the river that I've been catching a few big fish and I was hoping you know if I could get a few here and then cull out a couple up there I'd think I'd be sitting okay but we'll just have to play it by ear I guess I caught some fish yesterday on a drop shot but it's kind of that's one bait that I have not got a clear understanding of so far I need to get a little better at it I just don't have the confidence in it to do it today I may try it you know last thing before we go in depending on how the day's gone Bobby Albert is now pitching docks with a 7 16 ounce homemade finesse jig on 10 pound fluorocarbon. Another close one. Bump him hard and he barely touches.
We find Andy Burns near Campbell Point. He's drop shotting a deep ledge using a 4 inch green finesse worm and a 3 8 ounce weight. Small one. Okay. Yeah, a little one. That one was suspended. Seen my line stop when I'm way down. When fishing docks, Albert uses a heavier jig and lighter line, which allows the bait to sink considerably faster. This presentation can cause reaction strikes from bass suspended under the docks. If the bass are near the bottom, the jig also gets down to the strike zone quicker. Back to Matt L swimming a three quarter ounce football jig on a timbered point near Ants Creek. There's one, good one, big one. That's a big fish. If it's a bass, that's a big fish. Here, baby. Oh, there's one. Whew. Ooh, she about got it bad. Gotta be careful with her. It's got her gill. Just went just under it. That's a good start right there. Get some water going in here. Danny Burns is hooked up on his drop shot rig near Campbell Point. Oh, he's a good one. Keeper. Okay. What we're gonna do now? I'm gonna get right under the seat. If I'm within, uh, I think eight feet of the bottom. If I'm in clear water, eight, ten feet of the bottom. I like to usually get about five, six feet. Then there's a lot of fish on bottom that's not showing up on the screen, and you'll see them come up and eat it. Same token. If I'm in 35, 40 feet, and I see one suspended at 25, then I'll reel up to him and stop and shake it, and a lot of times you can catch that fish. See this bluff here? The, this ledge goes like this, and it goes right out through there, and off the edge of it, it drops off, and that's where these fish are hanging, right off the edge of that ledge. You'll be in 22 feet, and boom, you'll be in 44 feet. It's just real steep. Matt Ells is hooked into a good one, but it has him in a tree. She keeps sawing me off down in there. She's still on there. There she's running. Come out of there. Son of a gun. Oh, that was a big fish. There's one. That's a good fish. He's back down in the tree too. There he came out though. I may win the battle with this one if he doesn't jump. He can't figure out which way he wants to go. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. What just happened? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to go to heavier line. 
I don't know what happened on that one. I just retied and didn't have any bad spots. <sighs> That's two in a row. Two big fish in a row. Matt Ells may have a hard time recovering from his losses. Danny Burns has made the long trip up the James River to Cape Fair. He's now pitching a jig to flooded shoreline bushes. Gosh. This fish comes off, but gets him hung in a bush first. Matt Ells has also moved to the upper James River. He's now pitching a brown and purple Aikens jig to shallow cover on a channel bank. Well, I've been catching fish up here. Uh, it's been good for me every, you know, for three or four keepers every week. As a matter of fact, in the Pro-Am last week, uh, we had four off this bank. It just happened to be that my amateur had three of them, but you know, that's part of it. It's just, it's held fish for the last two months for me. And it doesn't get hit extremely hard. You know, the, all the banks around it get hit real bad. But this stretch of bank seems to hold fish and the fish that I catch are either little bitty you know, won't even, you know, only eight, 10 inch fish or else they're three and a half, four pounders. So I was hoping I could get a few quality fish and go back to where I missed that or lost those two or broke those, broke those two off this morning and maybe pick one up there and get a limit out of the deal. Danny Burns has pulled off into deeper water and again is using his drop shot rig. Feels like a good one. I'm back reeling him. I don't know if he is or not. Can't see. There's fish everywhere on that screen. Look on that screen. <laughs> They're everywhere. No, he's short. I'm not gonna mess with him. Back to Bobby Albert pitching a jig to boat docks near Fisher Creek. short too. It's awful. All these bushes in the water down here are hard to pass up, but I haven't caught any keepers out of them. I mean, I still, when I go past them, I still try to throw in them every time. Maybe get lucky sooner or later, but I haven't caught a single fish out of a bush. It's all just been on rock. The majority of them have been real shallow too, less than a foot of water. Danny Burns is now swimming a brown and purple jewel football jig on a sloping point in the James River. There's a bass. Got him on. Oh, he's a little one. See him out there jumping? Bobby Alberts moved back to Schooner Creek. Back to Matt Ells pitching a brown and purple Aikens jig to a 45 degree bank up the James. Another little one. Danny Burns has another small fish on the line. 
another Kentucky. With Way and drawing closer, Matt Ells runs back near the mouth of the James by Ants Creek. He'll try to salvage the day on the timbered point where he caught his only keeper. There's one. Good one. Man. It may not be quite as good as I thought. Not gonna take any chances. Decent fish. Don't think he's gonna keep though. Nope, he's not gonna go. Unfortunately, this fish won't cut it. Danny Burns has moved near Campbell Point. He's swimming his three quarter ounce football jig on a flat point. Got one. Feels pretty good. Luckily for Burns, this day is over. Came off. Dustin Cox of Springfield, Missouri is the first angler to weigh in with a respectable limit. He will easily take the lead. New leader, 13.06. 13 13.06, give him a hand. Dustin Cox takes the early lead with 13.06 pounds. Cape Fair, Missouri angler Bobby Sullivan is next to the scales with a limit that will challenge Dustin Cox for the lead. To take the lead, and I think this could be really close. I think we got a new leader. Uh-oh. He saw a tie and so did I. Now let's let the scales settle out. 13.02. 13.02. Sullivan misses the top spot by four hundredths of a pound. Steve Marler of Fenton, Missouri comes to the stage with a big bass. Steve's looking for a big bass check. You know, that fish right there might be worth $600. I know that probably would bother you to collect that. $4.65. $4.65, and that is big bass so far today. Marler's 4.65 pound bass is the largest so far of the tournament. Eric Hold of Galena, Missouri has won two Heartland tournaments this year. Can he make this elite event his third? He's got to beat 13.06 to take the lead. Think you can do it, Eric? New leader, 13.62, 13.62 pounds. Holt takes the lead with 13.62 pounds, but there's one more angler yet to weigh in. Now he's going to have to beat 13.62 to take the lead. Don Pippen, also of Galena, Missouri, has a limit that could give him the lead. Not another big one in there, boy. This it could. I think I think he's going to be a little shy. Oh man, not very much. So 13.11, 13.11. The winner of the 2004 Heartland Elite Tournament on Table Rock Lake is Eric Holt with 13.62 pounds. Second goes to Don Pippen with 13.11 pounds. Pippen fished in the Kings River and targeted channel swing banks with the three quarter ounce brown and purple football jig with a cinnamon twin tail trailer. In third, Dustin Cox with 13.06 pounds. Cox pitched a 5 16 ounce jig to flooded bushes in the White River. Big bass honors of the tournament go to Steve Marler with his 4.65 pound bass. Marler got the fish on a brown 5 16 ounce Aikens jig and Zoom Critter Craw near a flooded willow in Fisher Creek. Here's the best of the rest. Here's how our on the trail featured anglers finish. When we come back, learn how Eric Holt caught his tournament winning limit. Don't go away. New leader, 13.62. 13.62 pounds. 
Eric Hold has won a tournament in each of Heartland's three circuits this year. His third victory at Table Rock Lake was won in the James River in the Ants Creek area. Holt concentrated on points with cedar trees sitting in 45 feet of water. Here he is with more. Well, what we've been catching these fish on today is this new 5 8 ounce jewel football jig. It's got a fiber weed guard so I can bring it through the cedar trees and, and through the big rocks a lot better. I've been using the thing all day, haven't lost it yet. Taking a, a new Bass Medics uh, Twin Tail Grub with the 2IG Extreme Strike Enhancer, biting the head off so it fits on the hook a little better and a little straighter. And threading it on there. And the key is getting that thing on there perfectly straight. And before you push it all the way up, you want to put a little dot of glue on it, just a little bit. And push it up against that skirt. And what you want is that thing to hang on there perfectly straight. You want it straight down the shank of the hook and not curling up. And you want the tails laying flat on the ground, just like that. When that jig comes through there, you want those tails just like that. And it's a lot more natural of a presentation. If they get cocked like this, it just doesn't swim there as well. Just run as straight as possible, and every little movement you make with that thing is going to make that tail move. Next week, there. we're heading to Oklahoma's Grand Lake of the Cherokees for Heartland's Buddy Tour. The most competitive bass fishing teams in the central U.S. are chomping at the bit to prove themselves. Got Shallow water and big bass are heading your way next week. Don't miss it. All right, all right. Heartland on the Trail, the most exciting television coverage of the Midwest's richest bass tournaments. For fast boats and fish catching action, it's Heartland on the Trail. On the Trail is a production of Marine Grade Marketing.